Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar, and bear with me. I'm hoping that the uh, you can hear the audio. Bear with me. And just let me know if you can hear uh, if the audio or the volume is coming through. Just going to uh, mark. Uh, okay, great, great. Just wanted to make sure. Uh, thanks, Gary. Bear with me. Okay, great. Hang on, let me just. Now I can hear the squad guy talking loud and loud as can be. Hang on. Don't you do. Okay, great. Thank you very much for um, for letting me know. Um, yeah, the electricity had gone out. It's actually 10 degrees here in San Antonio. Um, actually, I was about to share this right when the electricity went out. So it's 10 degrees and snowing here, and it hasn't been this cold in uh, 30 years. So, and we it's never snowed in February. So the, we'd only get little, maybe a couple of sprinkles every now and then. So uh, but anyway, it's actually snowed over here, so it's it's cold as can be. Uh, but anyway, that being said, uh, we finally, fortunately, able to get everything going, and we'll take a look where we stand. Um, it is uh, a holiday here in the states. So I'm not sure how much we're going to move in FX. We'll take a quick look at what we stand <clears throat> as far as um, FX. So the euro is a little bit on the bid here actually pushing up against these highs. Uh, cable, still solid as a rock. Wow, look at that. That I means still holding up very well. Aussie dollar, same thing here. So obviously the dollar remains under pressure. Kiwi also looking good. Dollar CAD, key if we get a close below 26.87, we were able to defend it on Friday. And uh, dollar peso, same thing here, weakening. And of course, we saw um, the NASDAQ and S&Ps blow out on Friday. They, they finally got that push above. And we'll get to that screen quickly. Bear with me. Uh, Didier said it's all good. Irina says, yes, we can hear you. Yes, all good, says Didier again. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. I didn't want to keep just repeating. Um, Let's just go to the other screen quickly. And there we go. Everything's still the same. Um, the only difference is I've got everything. It makes it easier. I've got everything pushed up here at the bottom. So all the, I can just pop into these much faster and then just a little bit bigger look here. But by the way, here's Bitcoin. Bitcoin made that push towards 50,000. Had the 161% at 50,102. Go move that here. It almost made it to. Let me see what was the high there. Got up to forty nine six ninety, and fifty one oh two would be all right. I'm right there. So we did go and see this going and break out. Uh, my break up, I make that dip in here, break to the almost to the 50. Thought they might be able to get gun some stops. Pretty good little dip back, nothing huge though, but trying to pop back again. And then, uh, of course, as I mentioned on the um NASDAQ, we broke out, uh, really bolted, and then we actually added on to that in uh, Asian trading. You can see here if we run this uh, trend line right across the tops, actually, this is just a little bit off. Let's see here. There. So pretty close. I'm kind of thinking that we might get one more push once we get you know, probably tomorrow. Um, we'll see how much further that they can go on and push, but uh, already been a pretty good move here. Uh, take a look here on the 30 minute. We got to the 127% extension. Um, 
uh, the most recent range in 13,923 would be the 161. Kind of thinking that we might see one more push up in here uh, come Tuesday and before maybe the market pauses a little bit, but take a look back on here. Um, there was some pretty good volume. Go back in here. On this break here, they had some pretty good volume as we popped up. Decent volume here. This is really just only on the regular trading hours, but you can see it's pretty good volume there. So I'm thinking that well, this market still has potential to keep on moving higher, but maybe we'll make uh, a pause, uh, another push on Tuesday, and then maybe, maybe on Wednesday we kind of just take a little bit of a pause to catch itself back, but we'll see. Let's go on and get back. Uh, we'll go on and get into the news. So the Australian dollar higher as markets cheer vaccine rollouts. The Australian New Zealand dollars started the week higher against the greenback on Monday, benefiting from the buoyant equity and commodity markets uh, ahead of both countries' planned coronavirus vaccine rollouts. The Australian dollar was at 77.77, well up from this month's uh, troughs of 75.64 and 75.83. The Kiwi uh, went to 72.29, had enjoyed a solid bounce from the month's low of 70.97. Uh, both risk currencies have benefited from the higher commodity prices and economic performances found their success in controlling the spread of the virus. Australia will begin um, inoculating against COVID-19 next week after receiving the first 142 thousand doses of the Pfizer biotech vaccine, while New Zealand vaccinations are planned to start February 20th. Positive risk appetite would likely push the Australian dollar higher against more definitive uh, defensive counterparts with the performance of equities, a key driver, Australian New Zealand banking group analysts said. Shares were advancing to record highs in some Asian markets while oil rose to more than a one-year peak as successful coronavirus vaccine rollouts raised hopes of a rapid economic recovery. Australian equities were close to 1% higher as positive domestic corporate earnings boosted investor demand while a number of financial centers in Asia remain closed on Monday for the Lunar New Year. And the dollar held down by Dow, so the pace of the U.S. recovery and Bitcoin retreats. The dollar started the week pinned near the uh, two-week lows on Monday as traders questioned whether the recovery from the pandemic in the United States would be as fast as expected. The world's most uh, popular cryptocurrency had rallied 25% last week, given by, uh, driven by endorsements by, uh, from Tesla and BNY Mellon. The dollar index slipped to 90.33, closed last week to 90.24, a level unseen since January 27th. The gauge hit a two-month uh, top on 91.60 on February the 5th in hopes that the U.S. rebound would outpace the major economies, but has since pulled back in disappointing employment data. Now the market is looking for actual evidence that the U.S. economy is outperforming, said Shinichiro Kadoda, the euro edged to 21.31, the dollar rose to 105. 04 yen and many financial markets in Asia remain closed on Monday for the new lunar year holiday, and the United States is also out for President's Day. I didn't know if they were still closed for the lunar year holiday. Holy smokes. And lastly, with Bitcoin, dollar held down by doubts. Let me see. Uh, that's the same one. Let's pull up the Bitcoin story. Bitcoin rally falters just short of $50,000 as investors take profits. Bitcoin uh, stalled just short of the 50000 mark on Monday, and other cryptocurrencies slipped as investors took profit from a record-breaking rally that is driven by a worldwide shift in investor and public, public attitudes toward digital assets. 
Bitcoin fell as much as 5.6% to 45914 in Asian trading after having posted a record high of 49714. The diff now taps the brakes on a surge that has vaulted the cryptocurrency from the fringes of the finance to Wall Street as big investors and large companies have begun to take the digital assets seriously and started to buy a lot of it. Bitcoin is up 20% in the week since electric car maker Tesla announced that it had $1.5 billion in Bitcoin and would accept the currency as payment. It has gained more than 60% for the year to date and more than 1,100% since March. There's a little unadulterated wave of big players buying that has continued to push the price higher, said Chris Weston, head of Melbourne brokerage firm Pepperstone. We might be seeing one or two big funds just cashing out, he said. The big question is, okay, you want to buy the pullback? But how big the pullback that we are talking about? Lunar Year holidays in Hong Kong and China also kept a lid on moves in Asia, while a tweet from Tesla boss and crypto advocate Elon Musk appeared to weigh on the price of Doggy coin, which he had previously promoted. So there we go. And let's go and take a look as far as the economic calendar for the week. We know that there's not going to be a whole lot, obviously, for today. In the States, uh, we don't have anything now. Um, we do have uh, Eurozone, Eurostat prices at the top of the hour. And at 8.30 Eastern, we will have Canadian manufacturing sales. Then, let's see, on the 16th, we'll get uh, Italian flash trade balance and French unemployment rate. That has to be tomorrow, along with German zoo numbers and Eurozone GDP flash. So pretty good, you know, pretty big day tomorrow as far as economic data for the Eurozone. Then we do get New Zealand dairy prices and housing starts and New York Fed manufacturing tomorrow. Uh, and that'll be it really for the, in the States, New York Fed manufacturing. And then come on Wednesday, we'll get the UK CPI and PPI. And as we roll into the States, we'll get PPI final demand and retail sales and Canadian CPI. That will be for Wednesday. So with that, uh, we'll go on and um, move into the analysis. So starting off with the euro, Friday the euro found support near the key 2073 pivot. If you remember, that was our bias chart support actually, and the low I think was 2079. Uh, before rebounding to close above 21 even, resistance for Monday will be 2159 with support remaining at 2073, but we didn't break lower. So, but it's relatively quiet though. So it's gonna be 2059. 21, actually, look, it's going to be identical. So no changes here. And you can see our buy chart support on Friday. I think the low on Friday was 20.79, so not bad. We missed it by six pips. And we're going to keep this resistance at 21.59. Did get a little bit of a hammer. Not much. It wasn't like we drove low, way low. But uh, you can see they did hold up that 2073, which is important because 2073 was the level that generated the sell signal. So we didn't take that out, although it would have been key if it would have taken it out and then come right back. But uh, for right now, 2159 right here is going to be resistance. We'll go and move on to the cable. So cable closed at another new high to finish the week. Next target is going to be 39.62 with a pause at 39.27. Support will be 37.50. So we still have an opportunity to go and move higher. Those are weekly levels. So uh, potentially we can go to 39.62. 
3927 will be the first stop. And 3750, if we were to get that pullback, would be support. Next would be Aussie dollar. Aussie dollar closed at the its best level of the week on Friday. Resistance, uh, the resistance zone of 77.65 to seven. I don't know why that's because uh, he's got 77.65 to 78.04 will be a challenge. Me going in. Uh, I don't know if it's allowing me to, there we go. 77.65 to 78.04. 77.65 to 78.04 will be a challenge. Support will be 76.96 with a daily close below this level signaling the short-term top. So right here, we've got some good resistance coming in here, but it's this top up in here. But you can see we've got this little zone coming in here. But if we were to push, the upside would be the 7804, but anywhere between 7765, you can see we've got some resistance in here. Um, just to make it clear, we'll just go with the 7804. And support will be 7696. Onto the Kiwi. So the Kiwi rallied off of the lows on Friday, opening the possibility to re-challenge the highs. Immediate resistance will be 72.53 with support at 71.70 to start the week. So 72.53 in the high so far has been 72.46. So once again, let's go back. And 7170 support. On to the dollar CAD. The dollar CAD rally on Friday fizzled, finishing at the day's lows. Bulls will be tested to start the week with support at 2648. A close below 2648 will allow a challenge of the weekly level of 2589. Resistance will be 2765. And you can see the low so far has been 2660, but 2648 will be the support that we start the week with. Let's go and move into the dollar peso. The dollar peso finished the prior week on its back foot. Key support to start the week will be 1984. A daily close below that opens a challenge for 1963. Resistance will be 2006. On to the dollar yen. Wow, we're making a pretty good little push here so far. Not huge, but it's you know nice steady run it seemed. So the dollar yen saw a rebound off critical support of 1952. I meant to be 452. Let's just go on and correct that. Critical support off of 452. There's a 452 right there. 
last week. Immediate resistance is going to be 520. Well, we're already above that with a daily close above 542 for bulls to regain control. Support will be 469. So they've already made a pretty good little push here. The key is going to be if they can get a daily close above 4, 542. So we'll mark that extra as our bias chart resistance since they've already started with a pretty good little push. And support, it's going to be this work right here. We may not see it, but that would be support then, 482. Since we're already pushing higher here. On to the cash dollar index. The dollar index finished the week with a thud. Immediate support will be 90.09 with a daily close below 89.90 to open a challenge to 89.25. Resistance will be 91 even. Now, when I put 91 even, it's not like I think, oh, this thing could keep on going higher. It's just that it'll, they would have to get above 91 even to, to you know, make that – make. Uh, to draw some concerns. Oh, maybe we're starting to move higher. So anywhere up here, you know, like with 90, 60, 90, 80, it makes no difference. This thing just, you know, it's it's under so much pressure. You'd have to get above 91, which would be resistance at that point. Anything up to here, it could move up in here, but it doesn't change, change the fact that it's under a lot of pressure. And uh, resistance will be 91 even. And as I mentioned, support would be 90.09. A close below 88, 89.90 would open the door for 89.25. But today supports there at 90.09. And we've got resistance at 90.98. Because we said, well, we'll leave it at the 90.98. Two ticks aren't going to make any difference. Let's go and move into the uh, QEN. So the QEN has traded in a 100 pip range for the entirety of last week. Upside resistance remains the weekly level of 76.25 with support at 75.02. Well, we're looking here. We've got 76.31. I mentioned 76.25, but that level comes in at 76.31. So we'll update that. That weekly level is 76.31. I'm not sure I have 25 there. You can see it clears a bell. We'll go and put it into a weekly just to show you that. See right there coming across. Pretty good week resistance there, and that's where we're at. So 76.31. And support seventy five oh two. A euro pound. The year pound closed at a new lows on Friday. Immediate support will be 87.15 with a potential test to 86.81. Resistance will be 88.13. So immediately right now, 87.15 and resistance 88.13. 88,
onto the rod. So the euro closed at new lows for the prior week. Immediate support will be 55.77 with a potential move to weekly support of 55.24. I actually have it on the weekly chart right now. That's why you're seeing it so spread out. But um, euro clo odd closed at new lows for the prior week. Immediate support will be 55.77 with a potential, potential move to weekly support at 55.24. Resistance will be 56. 77. On to the Euro Kiwi. So the Euro Kiwi finished the prior week off the lows, but remains weak. Bulls need a daily close above 68.51 to put in a temporary bottom. Support will be Onto the Aussie yen. Wow, new highs here on the Aussie yen. We'll have to move into the weekly chart. There's the weekly chart. Got a little bit of a zone here. You can see that between 81.57 and the upper area, which would be 82.31. So the LCM broke to a new high to close the week. The pair is in an area of wicks and bodies on a weekly chart. We're looking at a weekly chart right now. Suggesting we may see a struggle after an initial push to start the week. Resistance will come in at 81.28 with support at 80.01. Well, we're here at 81.57. There's the weekly level. I'm not sure I put uh, 28 here. Um, but you can see we're making this push. But we've got here at the weekly, you can see right here, this lower area is the 81.57, and the other upper area is 82.31. 82.31. So we'll go with the 82.31. And I think we may see a little pause after we get the initial run. And we're looking at it on the weekly chart. And support, let's go to the daily chart. Support's just going to be, well, you see this wick and this body right there? That would be support if we get a pullback, 81.17. And as I said, you can see that right here. If you come across the wick here. Coincides with this close right there, 81.17. Let's go move on to the guppy. I have to go to a weekly chart on the guppy also. So the guppy broke to new highs to finish the week. Resistance will be the weekly close of 45.97. Holy smokes, we've been pushing beyond that. We're supported 44.38. So now we've gone and pushed beyond this 45.97. So let's see where how much where that takes us. Here's this previous week's high right there. So that's gonna be 46.80. That's what we gotta go with 46.80. Well, let's see here. You've got these bodies here. 
4633, we're right there at 4633. You can see all this little cluster from these, this body here, 4633, to the top of these wicks here at 4719, and the last high was right there. 4680. So we'll go with that. We'll call it 4681. Boy, this stirring is something else. And for support, we'll go into the daily. Support is going to be the previous uh, bars high. And that's way down here. 45.44. Man, people have just gotten smack good but good on this thing. If they try to step in front of it. Let's go on and close out with the sturdy nod. The story now closed the prior week defending 78.25 after a sell-off on Thursday. Support to start the week will be 77.87 with resistance at 79.13. There we go. And that'll do it here for the bias chart right there. And we'll go and take a look uh, at the um, equities or indices, I should say. As I mentioned, we had that pretty good run up in here um, on Friday. We held that pivot. I'm not going to go into all those details, uh, but because we had discussed it last week, how it was so important the 13643 right here, as well as on the right here, the 13684, which was really the pivot. You can see it would never close. The dips were contained by the 643. And a pretty decent volume. Uh, and then the closes here, that as long as we held above that pivot, 84 opened the door, and boy, they took off and they added to it in Asia, and they're kind of quiet. I still think that when we come in tomorrow on Tuesday, we'll see a push up in here, probably another new high, and then we'll see whether or not the market can go in and take a pause. Taking a look at the E-mini, the uh, S&P, boy, we're right up there at the highs also. Look at that, strong, still very steady right up in here. I don't pay as much attention to the S&P, but you can see, boy, we we're holding up very well up in here. Uh, once again, going back to Bitcoin, we did see that move almost get to 50,000. I thought we would have taken out 50,000. I myself had got out right in here on that first move there, and we kind of wallowed around that we made that one extra push. We've taken a dip back. We're kind of holding steady right here. Uh, but that's it. But uh, once again, taking a look here at the NASDAQ on a daily. Right there. This part, I just put this bar in here because I was going by the width. What's the furthest has gone out? And then we can see here right there, we saw a little bit of a pushback. So I kind of took that bar there and added here to just really, it's just an idea of how much further. So maybe like I said, we can go through Tuesday, maybe it'll push us up and maybe we'll see a pause on Wednesday. We'll see whether or not that comes, but just kind of was looking at a daily chart and it said going back to the two hour chart, boy, we saw that push and there was a lot of good volume right in here. So this looks like the market has pushed and accepted those new levels and, 
doesn't look like he's going to back down anytime soon at this point. I mean, what soon is, I mean, immediate, I think we might could, we might let the market kind of rest a little bit once we get to Wednesday, I think, but like I said, it's already held up on this big dip back. We held up on very good volume uh, here at that 23% back. And then we went just back and forth, back and forth. The market absorbed the selling very well. And then of course we came out of balance and pushed up in here. Uh, we can go and take a look at just a couple other charts. Oh, Richard says, I'd like to talk about the chart on the right side. How's it called? Bitcoin producing higher highs. Um, bear with me one moment. Yeah, that's just a, a market profile chart. Um, TOS has its version of market profile where they do with the numbers. One of the things that I do like about this that I was using, and this profile is just for the for the, the, the regular trading hour session. But one of the things that I, I kept noting on was the dips would keep holding back to the previous uh, previous session's point of control uh, over there looking. So, but the way, I mean, the, I don't know if you've ever used market profile. I have a little bit, but the only reason I decided to focus a little bit more on it and wasn't a matter of just jumping to different things is because when I was trading the, the, the NQ for a while, we were, and I've discussed that before with um, Irina, we would, the market would react so well to the Fangman stocks. And of course that would make sense because those had the highest weighting of the index. And then as this rally kept broadening out, broadening out, for the most part, the Fangman weren't even, were just basically flat. There was a little bit of rallies, but I was over here spinning my wheels trying to follow that. So what I did was just try to focus just more just on the flat out technicals uh, of that. And so I started to use the profile. Really, a lot of people now using the profile. And you can see here, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of, you can probably watch some videos or read some stuff on the profiles, but you can see, and this is just for the regular trading hours. And one of the things I like doing is uh, like uh, on Friday, I was actually short the NQ coming into the opening of the uh, the U.S. market. And let me go back to here. Let's see here. Let's go back on the 30 minute. But that, that uh, as I was telling you, let's go back to the four hour, I guess. We had taken, let me see, we'd come down here and that 364 had really been holding up very, very well. Actually was uh, got short and I had a chance to cover in, in European trade and I didn't and I got stuck holding it and then when we came back in the US session it held up but one of the things I was looking at is also looking at the profile which had been calling the market very well on the you know in the day session when the market would open up so when you look at the market profile generally it's going to go by letters uh, trade station has their not trade station I mean uh Thinkorswim has its own profile of the way they go and do it. And generally in the first half hour, you have the letter A, but this is the number one. The second half hour, you have the letter two, and it goes on so forth. And the pink line is going to be the point of control, volume point of control, where the most action is going to be taking place. And that's what I'm saying is that look at the look at this low, the low from the previous session, look where it stopped, right at the previous session's point of control. And I saw that happen several times. Look at the previous day's session. When we came into the US session, the low held at the previous day's point of control. And look at the previous one, held at the previous. That's a big, big help. But what you do, what I would do, it, and I don't have enough time to talk about profile, but the first um, hour is going to be here, which is the initial range right here for that first hour. And then you can see it's a market. You have to go in and follow these. You can see the numbers. After a while, the only reason I moved it to here, I had it on a different screen, and I just wanted to be able to follow it when I'm more closely looking, just focus on one screen, because I will then look at a, a, a five-minute with the volume, um, we can pull this out. You can see the volume. Or well, sometimes I'll even be scalping with a two minute. Then of course I've got my um, what you call um, 
God, lost my train of thought. Uh, my VWAP, my daily VWAP. So I'll try and look at those. And as I'm going back and forth, I would have this on a different screen. So I wanted to move it there. And really, this is just only on the regular trading hours, but I try and keep an eye on it. But that's what I'm saying is it was so huge last week because look at this. This day's low right here matched up with the previous day's point of control. You see that? The low matched up. The next day's low matched up with that day's point of control. We had the big washout day, but just that's what I'm pointing out is, like I said, how well that that had worked for me. But there's other ways to go and use it, many different ways. Not really the way I was referencing, but that's all it is. It's a, a, a market profile, but for the regular trading hours. And I had one, well, if you saw one on the other window, I had one for the s and I don't follow the S&P as closely, but I might as well just have it there. But that's what that was in reference to. Um, moving on to here, I just want to go and take a look at the, see where gold is at. I'm not tracking it, but, uh, some are, let's take a look at here on the daily. There we go. So we're back to revisiting that 1816. We did see a bit of a bounce. But gold just simply isn't reacting. The reason I think it's not reacting because there's so many other options to go to with the altcoins. So I think that's why a lot of people are scratching their head this week and saying, man, why isn't gold reacting? And if you think about where the dollar is and the potential for inflation, all that, it's not moving anywhere. But I think it's because people can go into Bitcoin or Ethereum or some of the other altcoins. So I think that's the reason why. Uh, crude oil has seen a pretty good little bounce. Um, look at that. Oh, my God. Boy, that thing has been a huge bounce. And that's the thing about crude oil. I almost thought about trading it again. I thought, nah. I, I looked down different charts. But that's the problem with crude oil. It, if it goes in one direction, it runs you over. And look at that. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Just smoking people. But um, anyway, that'll be, that'll be it. We'll see you later in the chat room, but it's going to be a U.S. holiday. So, And then on top of that, it's an Asian holiday with the Lunar Year year, so not going to see a whole lot of uh, volume there. But uh, thanks for joining here, us here in the European Crossover Webinar.